drilling alliance. And uh, we're a, a grassroots organization, about a thousand members. We have a website, uh, responsibledrillingalliance.org. And uh, we put out a lot of information just about what's going on here in Pennsylvania and the world and the country about geocast drilling and exploration and production and the whole, the whole development. Um, and uh, we put out a monthly or weekly newsletter. If you're interested, you can sign up on our website uh, just to give you information about what's going on. Uh, as you probably know, we, the state just recently passed legislation dealing with gas development. It was, uh, it's called Act 13 now, and that's, we think that's an appropriate uh, number to give. It's unlucky and a lousy piece of legislation. And uh, you know, one of the reasons is because it's such a low effective tax rate on the industry. Uh, and we wonder why Pennsylvania sets the bar so low. Why does, it, why does it not believe that we are at least equal to other major gas producing states or minor gas producing states for that matter in the percentage that should go to everyone? Because we're, we're really dealing with a lot with gas development. You'll see here on the local level what goes on, but you know, the, the area in the northern part of the state, which contains a small percentage of the population, is really a big asset for everybody in Pennsylvania because it's, it's, it's where a lot of your clean water and clean air comes from, I mean, these beautiful forested and, and farm areas that uh, you know, were fairly untouched by development up until this particular very extensive development. So. Uh, other states, Texas, for instance, has a 7.5% severance tax. Uh, Alaska has 22.5%. Our effective rate will be somewhere between 1% and 3%. And we don't understand it. Uh, we think we deserve more. We're going to have to push our politicians to go that way. Uh, the, the bill that passed, is, is, it's quite incredible, the changes that have been imposed on us. And it's, it's this thick. And it's legal ease, and we wonder how many legislators, legislators actually read it, and who really wrote it. These things are usually written by industry lobbyists. So I could go over what uh, some of the real egregious parts of it, but I don't know that we have time today. It's really, uh, it's really a bit difficult. But uh, a couple of quick things. Uh, you know, traditionally municipalities have zoning powers, and even with shale gas development, our courts have upheld those powers to manage where and when drilling can occur, not how, where and when. But that's been pretty much taken away. You'll hear your legislators say, well, not really, but in actuality, we think it has. Um, the industry will get treated as no other industry does. And it's interesting that uh, our own DEP Secretary Kranzer testified at a congressional hearing last fall against the EPA getting involved in, in gas issues because he said a one-size-fits-all uh, policy doesn't fit because each state is different in terms of topography and climate and, and very localized things, which within Pennsylvania we're, we're different. I mean, the hypocrisy of it all is really hard to, hard to imagine. And what's happened now is basically the Pennsylvania Public Utility Commission, which has no business doing this, has the authority to invalidate any local ordinance that conflicts with oil and gas operations. And they've expanded the definition of oil and gas operations from the way it was before this legislation. They now include almost all gas production and transmission activities, so that includes pipelines and that includes your home area. Um, basically, I believe you'll find in here that the PUC's proceedings are also exempt from the sunshine laws. Uh, there's a number of new setbacks. I can give you the details, but I guess the thing to take away from all this is that there will be variances that will be granted. In fact, the bill even requires the DEP to grant a variance to setbacks if the requirements deprive a company of any oil and gas rights, or if a permit applicant says it will impede, it will implement additional protective measures. So in other words, all these setbacks, they're not that great to begin with, or really mean nothing. Uh, 
There's quite a few other things to talk about, but I think we should get to the heart of why we're here. Uh, I mean, there's bonding provisions in the bill for bonding to restore and plug abandoned wells and fix the sites as they're supposed to do when they're finished, but they're very inadequate even by today's prices to do those kind of activities. So what's gonna happen in 50 or 100 years when these companies collapse their various shell corporations and walk away from these things? We're gonna get stuck. Somebody's gonna get stuck. Our, our, our progeny someday is gonna have these bills to pay. Uh, it's, I mean, just little things, like the bill requires operators to replace, not clean up private and public water supplies they may contaminate. Well, how do you replace it? People are living with what they call water buffaloes, tanks of water, which isn't that good quality to begin with. And really, there, there, there's just a ton of things, but the, the main thing is we've got to work a lot harder and push our legislators to get something out of this for all of us. Otherwise, you know, it, the, the industry has an amazing ability to escape taxes, starting at the federal level. And at the state level, most of these drilling operators are limited liability corporations, so they won't pay the high corporate tax that everybody complains Pennsylvanians pay. They'll pay the same tax that you and I pay on our income tax. And if that, because they have many ways of, of avoiding taxes, that much of the sales tax is avoided, to write off all their drilling costs up front. Uh, they can also sell, sell gas to their own pipeline company from their well operating company at below market prices so they don't have profits. There's all kinds of uh, tricks and we're never gonna catch them. We're never gonna compete with them, keep up with their accountants and their lawyers. We just have to decide like every other state that we need a severance tax because that's the only way to really get something for Pennsylvania. So we hope that we can all uh, think about what you're here today and think about how we can really get get something for everybody in the future. Thanks for coming and hope you enjoy the talk.